Welcome to the Fifth Kind. This video is brought to you in partnership with Gaia.com, creating thought-provoking documentaries and programs. There have been many ancient discoveries around the world that make us question the historical accuracy of our documented past. None more so than the discovery of the ancient stone circle site Gobekli Tepe. This 12,000-year-old site can be found in southeast Turkey and has been dated as the oldest temple ever discovered. It is 7,000 years older than Stonehenge in the UK and 7,500 years older than the pyramids of Egypt a discovery shaking the foundations of known history. Humanity's civilized origins are commonly regarded to date back to around 3500 BCE, when civilizations first began and cities formed in the lands of Sumer in ancient Mesopotamia. Gobekli Tepe completely disrupts our conventional understanding of the storyline of Homo sapiens because our current view is that our civilization began about 5,000 years ago, while Gobekli Tepe dates from about six and a half thousand years before that. First uncovered in 1994 by a Kurdish shepherd named Savak Yildiz, he found the site after spotting an unusual looking rock on the surface, brushing away the dust and uncovering a large oblong shaped stone in turn, leading to the temple's excavation. As the excavations continued, a number of surprising things began to become clear. First off, this pot-bellied hill and this whole site had not been covered up by natural sedimentation. After being in use for about a thousand years, it was deliberately buried by whoever was involved with it. This was not some invading army who came in and smashed it up. This was a, in a kind of preservation. You, you must envisage teams of hundreds of people with sort of buckets filled with stone and rubble, and they're coming and they're pouring it in on top of the existing stone circles. And they just keep on pouring until every stone circle is covered. The Greek philosopher Plato, writing about two and a half thousand years ago, talks about a civilization that came before us. And he also speaks about another agency or other entities that were involved in assisting our development as a species, and in particular, nurturing us as a conscious, intelligent, and technological race. Now, it seems to me that these ideas of Plato, the previous civilization, and this intervention uh, from outside to help us along are really corroborated by what we see at Karakadag and at Gobekli Tepe. They are both fascinating moments in the human story and when we come to Gobekli Tepe we're looking at something we've only just begun to explore. It's 50 times the size of Stonehenge when we get round to excavating the whole thing. It's 7,000 years older than the pyramids of Giza, and we have only just begun to excavate what's there. Gobekli Tepe is the oldest stone circle complex in the world. If you can imagine Stonehenge in England and transpose it onto the top of a mountain top in southeast Turkey, um, and then multiply it by at least 20 times and then cover the stones with beautiful carvings of animals and representations of, of abstract humans and give them T-shaped tops because that's what the, tone, the stones have there. This is what Gebekli is. It was constructed at the very end of the last ice age uh, around 9500 BC and was in use for a period of around 1500 years before it was abandoned about 8,000 BC. What's so interesting is that the oldest and the most accomplished of the technologically uh, advanced stone enclosures, and that alone gives us evidence of possibly a lost civilization. The fact is that Gobekli Tepe is in northern Mesopotamia. 
the area around Urfa and Haran and Gobekli Tepe. This is clearly the cradle of civilization. This is where the Anunnaki had their power base. I am on a trip with geologist Robert Schock, from, who had had his PhD in Yale University, and we are standing down inside of the excavation at Gobekli Tepe, surrounded by these 19-foot-tall limestone pillars, each weighed up to 15 tons, and they're in rings. And in that process of standing there and talking about this is the most baffling place. It doesn't feel like anything that humans can understand. Robert Schock said, you know, I've been staring at these tea structures and thinking about the old past and what could this have been built for? And he said, all of these limestone pillars have tea tops. And he said, it reminds me of tuning forks. And he said, you know, Linda, when you stand up at the top of the hill and you realize that Gobekli Tepe was built in a bowl. You're always looking down at the top of these big T pillars unless you climb down into and then you're among them. And he said, what if this whole place was built to resonate with certain frequencies by something above? Resonating frequencies on big pillars put in rings. When you look at Gobekli Tepe, and you see all of the constructions of, of the, the inscriptions of all of the animals of the earth on these, on these giant pillars. It's always um, been interesting to me that perhaps what these things were, were a way of recording a standing wave pattern of a certain kind of a life form. For instance, a crocodile exists on a different standing wave pattern than a, than a crane, than an elephant, than a monkey. And perhaps what they were trying to do was out of a state of preservation, trying to preserve these things. They were trying to preserve stones that actually had those frequencies recorded into them. I think what you can do is draw a lot of similarities and parallels to some of these other megalithic sites and get some pretty decent scientific insight into what they were trying to accomplish. And what it looks like they were trying to accomplish is the preservation of the scientific knowledge, um, uh, maybe at a time when there was just such global upheaval that the only way to preserve it was to bury it. Could very well be why they purposely buried the entire site. You're going to construct a megalithic site of that kind of grandeur and scale and put that kind of effort into it, and then you're gonna turn around and just bury it. Why would any society do that? But whoever built Gobekli Tepe, the fact that they buried that very important 30 acres of these rings of all of these limestone columns meant somebody, something knew that something potentially destructive to the whole planet and they didn't want Gobekli Tepe destroyed. But Gobekli Tepe survived until the 1990s. The dating of Gobekli Tepe is really interesting because it coincides with the most recent cataclysm that our planet has had to recover from. And that was the one that triggered the Younger Dryas Cold Period. And that dating speaks to why the site might have been buried. Because it is possible that it was buried by people to protect the site from an unfolding natural disaster, or it may have been buried to protect the site from people precisely because it had survived the previous cataclysm. And the way the site's currently dated and the way the burial is currently dated suggests that is the explanation, that it was buried to protect it from people. It's difficult to be certain because we still don't know what the function of that site was. Could the knowledge preserved contain the same astronomical understandings and mythological connections we find displayed within other ancient cultures? Gobekli Tepe is a kind of uh, uh, 
it's like a potpourri of cultures. You see a lot of uh, Sumerian influence. There's a lot of Egyptian symbol uh, symbolism in Gobekli Tepe as well. There's uh, Hindu uh, uh, influence in there as well, Japanese. And the fact is, this is where you start getting to this gray area. Uh, where does it come from? Was there a world book, a central point where everybody got their ideas from? It seems to me that Gobekli Tepe is almost like a microcosm of so many cultures around the world that supposedly never shared information with each other. And now we begin to realize actually they got around much more than we gave them credit for. The astronomy of the site is something that a number of researchers are beginning to look into and I think that's going to be, that's going to be one of the keys. Uh, to help us what was, understand what was going on at Gobekli Tepe, but there's nothing to beat plain old-fashioned excavation, and uh, that site needs to be dug up. I, I feel that Gobekli Tepe is potentially so important for unraveling the origins of our present civilizations uh, that we really need to expose the whole site and, and, and understand absolutely what's going on there. It uh, may change many things about how we view ourselves and, and our past. There's something more beyond that, that some part of us comes from the stars themselves, and that at the point of incarnation, that something, we call it the soul or the spirit, is embodies within flesh and blood and exists and that this gives us this connection to the stars, that, our, that, that the soul or spirit actually comes from an extraterrestrial or, or a starry source. Although the area has been dubbed by many as the most important archeological site in the world, efforts to further examine and excavate have proven problematic due to ongoing wars and conflicts in the region. I think it is our responsibility to preserve those records that are being destroyed in this cradle of civilization, in the Tigris-Euphrates, in Iraq, uh, in Syria, uh, in Turkey, because they are very intentionally being destroyed in, in some cases to wipe out the memory of these past civilizations for a number of reasons. Um, once they're gone, they're gone forever. And uh, I, I think it's very sad to see what's happening, and I think it's a wake-up call. We've taken for granted for so long the fact that these records are here and that they exist. We never really considered that they could be destroyed so easily. If they actually got the funding and got the effort and they excavated the rest of that 95% of that site, I'm pretty sure what it's going to do is answer a whole lot of mysteries about these other megalithic sites. And the reason why I say that is because here's a site that's completely preserved as far as we know. Um, it may be an actual perfect construction of the science that they were trying to, to save. And if that ends up being the case, then I think what you'll see is a resurgence um, all through humanity and a real effort to try to rediscover what it was that we're now missing, that we are a species living with amnesia uh, of what this science was. And it's simply because we've had such a turbulent history as a species, war after war, after cataclysm, after cataclysm, uh, the Library of Alexandria being burned. Um, all of those things mean that we've lost more knowledge, maybe, than we even possess right now. Um, and a lot of that knowledge, when you really begin to study uh, these ancient sites, can be regained. And I'm hoping that's what takes place with Gobekli Tepe. We've got a lot of mysterious cities uh, built out of stone around the world, but that kind of structure, and only 5% of it has been excavated, means that below that is such a massive amount to be found. I, I think Gobekli Tepe has many more secrets to reveal. The astronomy of the site is something that a number of researchers are beginning to look into, and I think that's going to be that's going to be one of the keys uh, to help us what was, understand what was going on at Gobekli Tepe, but there's nothing to beat plain old-fashioned excavation, and uh, that site needs to be dug up. I, I feel that Gobekli Tepe is potentially so important for unraveling the origins of 
our present civilizations, uh, that we really need to expose the whole site and, and, and understand absolutely what's going on there. It uh, may change many things about how we view ourselves and, and our past. There's something more beyond that, that some part of us comes from the stars themselves and that at the point of incarnation that something we call it the soul or the spirit is embodies within flesh and blood and exists and that this gives us this connection to the stars that as the, the, the soul or spirit actually comes from an extraterrestrial or, or a starry source I wish we could get into the minds and into the heads of the people who made these sites all over the world in, in megalithic structures, that they're all concerned with lining themselves up to the rising point of the sun at certain times of, at times of the year. They're telling us something about our connection to the cosmos and our, and our place on Earth. There is, for example, evidence of very, um, very, very clear, very precise astronomy at Gobekli Tepe. It contains, amongst other things, the world's first perfectly north-south aligned building. You can't do that without astronomy. Uh, there are alignments to specific star groups and specific moments of the year. It's a highly, it's a highly evolved site. Shamanic cultures right the way across the Eurasian continent saw the northern celestial pole as the point of exit from the physical world and the point of entry into the sky world. And it was seen as a whole, quite literally a whole, connecting the different universes, the middle world to the upper world. It would seem as if this stone is a signboard showing that journey and the actual course, the route that you would take to reach the sky world. I believe that one of the indicators to our earliest ancestors of a place of great power was the appearance of mysterious lights. It's known that a lot of strange light phenomena is seen in those very mountains where Gobekli Tepe is, is, is sighted. We call them UFOs today, but these type of phenomena have been occurring for many, many thousands of years, arguably since the beginning. I think that our ancestors would have seen these as important signs that here were places where you could establish points of contact, portals if you like, with the other world. And that by building your monuments here, that link with the stars would be stronger. The downloads of information that create civilization would be stronger. Pillar 43 at Quebec Tepe is a signboard for the shaman who would be achieving altered states of consciousness within the enclosures and then journeying in an astral form to the upper world. Gobekli Tepe remains a mystery yet to be solved, a sacred site so important that it could unlock the answers to understanding humanity's complex ancient origins. Many researchers suggest there must have been some outside influence teaching advanced masonry knowledge to humanity. Could this have been some transfer of technology from a forgotten civilization in our ancient past? Perhaps contact with a group of off-world beings from a distant star system? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching The Fifth Kind. This video is in association with Gaia.com, creating thought-provoking documentaries and programs. To see more from the Gaia series Ancient Civilizations and for unlimited access to thousands of educational works and documentaries, please click the links and receive your exclusive full access price for only 99 cents.